yeah so we are going to talk about this nodes transit in Taurus Scorpio So as we know, uh, I have already written uh, exhaustive article, I cannot say exhaustive, uh, but uh, still uh, descriptive article I can say, okay, uh, on uh, how these uh, nodes are going to work in our life, just a second. So, I have given its links also, so it will help us in understanding, okay. But uh, still, uh, just uh, if someone has any questions, uh, this session is more for that. But uh, uh, all I want to say is that uh, you will get um, maximum information from those articles. Uh, I cannot cover everything written in those articles here in the uh, in the uh, live session but uh, still uh, I will try to cover as much as possible okay so as we know that uh, Rahu and Ketu are about to transit uh, they, they will be transiting somewhere in next month exact transit date is I think 19 September as per the true nodes and uh, sorry as per the mean nodes uh, and uh, no as per the true nodes it is 19 September as per the mean nodes it is 23rd September so uh, they will be shifting their signs Rahu will be coming in Taurus and uh, Ketu will be coming in Scorpio on that day. Okay, so that is uh, one important thing. Uh, then, uh, uh, if we see the basic nature of uh, Rahu in Taurus and uh, uh, Ketu in Scorpio, and these are the signs where they are considered as exalted. Okay. And they are considered, I don't treat them exalted or debilitated anywhere, but uh, they are mainly considered by majority of astrologers as, as exalted and debilitated in these signs. Uh, exalted in these signs, so like Rahu is exalted in uh, uh, Taurus and Ketu is considered as exalted in Scorpio. Likewise, uh, if we talk about debilitation, then Rahu is in uh, debilitated is considered debilitated uh, in Scorpio and Ketu is debilitated uh, considered debilitated in uh, Taurus but uh, how I feel is that uh, they are neither exalted nor debilitated they are only doing the work they are supposed to do in any sign like uh, Rahu is uh, supposed to explode things uh, um, and blow things out of proportion so in uh, uh, in uh, Taurus sign it uh, it blows th things related with Taurus out of proportion means Taurus is wealth and assets Rahu uh, Rahu explores it it gives lots of wealth and assets okay in Scorpio also it is doing the same thing it is just blowing things out of proportion it is just that Scorpio nature is such okay Scorpio is the sign of uh, uh, major changes and stabilities and we don't like to have major changes and stability when Rahu is in Scorpio it is just blowing those things out of proportion means it is giving lots of uh, 
changes lots of instability to us and that is what we don't like in our life so we feel that uh, uh, rahu in scorpio is debilitated okay just because the result is not as per our desires okay understand it like this um, why uh, i have made uh, i have done a, a different session altogether where why i don't consider them exalted and debilitated but uh, just to recap shortly uh, taurus is the sign of wealth and assets we all like uh, wealth and assets everyone uh, is running uh, running out after some wealth and assets and it is not a wrong thing okay when uh, rahu uh, rahu is there it is Uh, blowing those things out of proportion means it is uh, blowing your uh, wealth and assets out of proportion you are getting lot of wealth so human nature is such that okay fine i am getting the results as per my desire then rahu must be exalted in the taurus sign because i am getting lot of wealth and assets now rahu in scorpio is the sign where uh, scorpio is the sign where uh, there are lots of uh, ups and downs and instabilities and rahu is there which is uh, uh, further blowing uh, blowing apart those uh, ups and downs and instability that means it is bringing lots of instability in life again human nature is such that we don't want uh, instability in our life and rahu is bringing it in scorpio that means rahu must be debilitated in scorpio okay so uh, main thing is that uh, uh, in rahu in taurus results are as per our desires as per our materialistic desires so it is uh, we consider it exalted rahu in scorpio uh, results are not as per our desires so we consider it debilitated but rahu is doing the same thing and in both the signs uh, it is only exploding and uh, blowing things out of proportion in every sign okay not only in these two signs but in every sign it is uh, doing the same thing whenever it transits th- through any sign it is doing the same thing so that's where i feel that they are neither uh, rahu or ketu are neither exalted nor debilitated they are just doing their work rahu is exploding things ketu is imploding things ketu is making us go inwards and rahu is uh, uh, showing off things outwards okay this is what i feel about rahu and ketu exaltation and debilitation that uh, they are just there they are not uh, uh, they are not uh, bringing any uh, new new result okay they are not uh, doing anything new in uh, uh, taurus and uh, scorpio sign they are just uh, uh, either exploding as per rahu or imploding as per ketu uh, in their respective signs then when uh, these two signs uh, transit during uh, during a particular time like uh, now rahu is going to transit into taurus and ketu is going to transit into um, uh, into scorpio understand that uh, as per mythological story rahu is the head of the demon okay it is the head portion of the demon which has all the sense organs okay uh, if you just pay attention your head has all the sense organs uh, eyes nose ears sense of smell touch everything is in the uh, uh, is in the this uh, uh, this portion of the body rest of the body don't have any sense organ in such a case uh, uh, wherever rahu is in your chart in your birth chart or during transit okay in your birth chart it is lifelong case during transit it is the case of uh, those 18 months okay where it is uh, where it is in uh, during the transit so wherever it is transiting rahu that's where all your sense organs are going because rahu is your head it is uh, uh, it uh, it has all your sense organs so we become focused at that poor and uh, that area of life wherever rahu is placed during transit okay if rahu is in uh, let's say in 11th house for someone in taurus uh, the person uh, will be m- much about uh, having uh, social um, big no- uh, social no- networking circle having big gains income and all so all those things 11th house related things he will be focusing okay 
uh, if uh, rahu is in fifth house for someone he may may be focusing on uh, creative aspects of life or uh, children children become big thing whenever rahu is in the fifth house children become a, a very big thing for them okay so uh, that is what uh, i mean to say that uh, wherever it is transiting in your uh, in your chart that house you will be focusing to all, uh, all the while during uh, next 18 months okay from september 2020 to like uh, uh, march april 2022 okay in this uh, in this time period we are, are going to focus on uh, or we will be gravitated towards those things uh, where rahu is transiting in whichever house rahu is transiting in our chart wherever taurus sign is falling in your chart you will be focusing in that we can take example from current transit also like <clears throat> i am a scorpio ascendant rahu was transiting my 8th uh, house all the way in last 18 months and uh, this time was very unstable for me okay nothing nothing major ha- happened but uh, throughout uh, this transit i felt very unstable okay i felt there is something uh, some instability going on in my life so that is uh, what uh, rahu is all about okay that uh, wherever it is transiting you cannot ignore it you cannot cannot uh, like uh, turn your eyes away because all your sense organs are there okay so it it will gravitate us to, uh, towards those houses uh, though, uh, that house where uh, rahu is transiting ketu wherever ketu is transiting in uh, uh, during annual transits uh, in that house you will feel separated okay it is common sense that if you uh, if you want to focus at something if you want to gravitate yourself uh, at something you have to separate you from somewhere else okay like uh, i cannot be at two places uh, at the same time okay either i can play cricket in the ground or, or i can make uh, this video right i cannot be at both the places together okay so uh, this is uh, uh, if i want to uh, focus on this i have to separate myself from the cricket ground likewise uh, rahu uh, rahu makes us focus at uh, certain things in our life wherever rahu is transiting ketu makes us separate from uh, certain things in our life wherever ketu is transiting so ketu will bring separation factor either mental or physical okay now uh, now understand one thing that um, uh, we like to give uh, sweeping remarks whenever it comes to ketu or saturn that uh, uh, ketu in the, in saturn house you will be separated from this and uh, this person or this uh, this thing and all understand it can be either uh, mental separation or physical separation not necessary it is going to be a physical separation okay so uh, that is uh, that is important like uh, you can feel separated from <laughs> someone even when you are uh, you are uh, residing with that person under the same roof okay even then you can feel separated and you can feel connected with someone even uh, if uh, it is a long distance relationship kind of thing okay so uh, the physical presence is not necessary here with ketu it is uh, it is more about uh, how you feel separation from some someone or something okay so wherever ketu is transiting in your uh, chart uh, in whichever house it will make you sep- uh, at least feel separated from uh, things related to that house wherever rahu is transiting it will make you feel uh, connected or gravitated towards that house related things rahu in taurus can blow th- uh, things out of proportion in matters of wealth and assets as i said it can bring lots of assets okay it can bring lots of wealth but the thing is that uh, rahu remains a malefic planet okay so as uh, as i discussed in uh, in my articles also that biggest challenge during this tra- rahu transit may not be like earning wealth 
ओके पीपल मे अर्न वेल्थ बट द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज विल बी ऑफ सेविंग वेल्थ ओके दैट बिकॉज मेलेफिक प्लैनेट्स दे मेक अस स्पेंड स्पेंड अवर मनी ओके वेन एवर राहु मार्स एटन और केतु दे आर इन्वॉल्व विथ सेकेंड हाउस इलेवेंथ हाउस और वीनस एंड ऑल दे मेक वी वी अर्न मनी बट वी आर अनेबल टू सेव द मनी लाइक वाइज सेम थिंग इज हैपनिंग हियर राहु इन टॉरस साइन राहु इज अ मेलेफिक प्लैनेट टॉरस इज द साइन ऑफ वेल्थ सो पीपल मे नीड टू लर्न हाउ टू सेव देयर मनी राहु विल गिव लॉट्स ऑफ मनी बट राहु विल ऑल्सो इंक्रीज देयर एक्सपेंडिचर और दे मे हैव टू स्पेंड इट अवे so the biggest challenge for them is to save the money okay uh, other things can also be there because rahu is a natural malefic planet anyways and it represents illusion so there can be lots of financial frauds there can be lots of cheating lots of uh, illusion in uh, financial dealings and also we may need to be very careful uh, while uh, having this financial dealings and all plus uh, uh, rahu represents uh, like uh, foreign things and taurus is the sign of wealth it shows that the importance of foreign currency may increase during this time okay uh, people may be inclined towards uh, dealing in foreign currency more um, uh, rather than uh, the their national currency okay uh, plus uh, like uh, it is uh, Uh, it also represents digital economy okay rahu represents on online things so rahu in taurus will represent digital economy so people will be inclined more about uh, uh, paying things for um, paying for things or services online or through cards or through digital ways rather than the actual payment the actual currency payment okay uh, so all these things will be prominent with the uh, rahu in taurus ex, uh, uh, taurus uh, end okay with rahu's end the, these things will be, uh, will be uh, important and as i said most important will be uh, like uh, to save your money and to be very careful while dealing with anyone financially uh, even like uh, these uh, f- uh, phishing emails or phishing calls or uh, uh, ha- uh, online hackers of bank accounts and all they will be very uh, very much active during this t- uh, time so uh, uh, not a bad advice to ch- uh, continuously change your passwords and all okay so uh, this is important uh, Uh, and as i said uh, uh, be very careful uh, regarding the financial frauds and all okay uh, it can be very prominent with ketu in scorpio uh, like uh, you will be uh, feeling separated from the things or people related with the house uh, where ketu is transiting at the same time scorpio is the sign of research and the occult ketu also represents the same thing so this time can be very good for any research oriented activity if people are uh, inclined towards research if people are inclined towards uh, doing uh, certain uh, uh, research oriented uh, education and all or any kind of research okay any kind of research activity and uh, not necessary that you should be in a cult related field or uh, mysticism related field or spirituality uh, uh, even if someone is in, uh, in is in medical field let's say and he wants to study surgeries that, that is uh, that is a very good uh, transit for any study related with surgeries um, ketu is there anyone who is in uh, crime related field like uh, police or any kind of uh, other agencies Uh, so this ketu transit can be very useful for their research and investigation okay uh, some new scientific invention can come up which may help them in uh, in their crime research and investigation okay like uh, we all know that uh, uh, forensic science has developed uh, to a great lim- uh, great extent 
it may have further inventions and it may have further discoveries and uh, those things can uh, can be helpful uh, yeah, during this transit and in future also so ketu in scorpio is more about uh, 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 more about research okay and it is more about uh, occult and mystical events okay Uh, if someone is very much into a spirituality or uh, spiritual pursuits like meditation tantra and black magic and what what not they can uh, they can have some uh, mystical experience they uh, if those people are uh, regularly putting their energy into occult and mystical fields uh, then they can have some mystical experiences uh, with ketu in scorpio it is always a um, big possibility then there is uh, always a, so the gist is that you will be gravitated towards uh, sorry we will be gravitated towards uh, where uh, rahu is transiting uh, in our chart rahu in taurus and that house related thing and we will be feeling separated from the house where ketu is transiting at the same time there can be major transformation in that house because scorpio ketu co rules scorpio scorpio is the sign of transformation changes and if it is uh, transiting through their uh, a, a particular house there can be major changes in that house okay like if someone has a, uh, is a libra ascendant person and ketu is transiting second house then uh, there can be some major changes in their uh, their family life or their wealth or uh, assets related things okay uh, their family environment family lineage okay so all those things can go through a major change uh, when ketu is transiting okay so uh, because scorpio is the sign of change and uh, ketu represents um, ketu co rules scorpio so ketu transiting into uh, at, into scorpio will uh, will bring some changes and actually if you see otherwise also ketu brings separation and if you feel separated from some uh, from an, a, a house related things or people in your life that means there is some change that means that there is some change in that house that is what making you feel separated till yesterday you were, you were uh, fine with that house understand it like this till yesterday till last month you were very fine with uh, that house related things now you are suddenly feeling separated that means there is uh, th- and there is some change ha- which has taken place okay so this is what i'm i wanted to convey so K- uh, rahu will uh, make us gravitate towards uh, the house related things uh, where it is transiting and taurus related things and ketu will make us uh, feel separated from the things related with the house where it is transiting at the same time ketu in a scorpio can make us very research oriented yeah, even if someone is not directly in research oriented field in these 18 months he may have to work hard uh, in, on the research oriented uh, sectors then uh, there can be different transits also Uh, uh there are some joint impacts uh, uh, created by ketu saturn together and uh, rahu jupiter together for which i have uh, written article i don't want to include everything in one session uh, which will make it confusing otherwise uh, we, we should just uh, focus on uh, rahu and ketu uh, axis uh, in this session okay uh, one more thing uh, which will happen is that uh, sagittarius sign uh, will uh, will be between ketu and saturn okay ketu in scorpio and saturn in capricorn will uh, will create uh, pap kartri yoga for uh, sagittarius sign so whichever house sagittarius is falling in your chart Uh, you can have lots uh, you can have uh, very limited results or benefits related with that house okay so this is one additional thing with this uh, transit uh, as i said there will be lots of wealth the, there can uh, there will be no dearth of money okay 
but uh, the biggest challenge will be uh, uh, saving the money okay that's what i feel about this transit let's see what questions uh, people have those articles will help you more uh, because those are like uh, very uh, de descriptive articles good morning okay we have some questions great my rahu in scorpio and ketu in taurus uh, this transit is exact opposite for me how i it will impact now okay this is called semi nodal return okay whenever uh, uh, nodes are over each other transiting over each other but uh, different nodes are transiting over each other like uh, you are born with rahu in scorpio and ketu in taurus now in tra in transit what is happening ketu is in scorpio and uh, rahu will be in taurus so end result is utter confusion okay because uh, and understand what is going to happen that uh, uh, rahu in your birth chart in scorpio is making you gravitated towards scorpio related things okay or the house where it is falling in your chart in your birth chart in your birth chart it is making you gravitated towards the house where um, rahu is falling now ketu is transiting over that house and making you feel separated okay likewise in your birth chart uh, ketu is in taurus so whichever house it is in your birth chart it is making you feel isolated or separated now rahu is transiting there and uh, it is making you feel gravitated so end result is that you don't know wh what to do whether to feel gravitated or um, isolated from a particular house of uh, of your chart okay so end result will be utter confusion whether to do something or not to do something so these two houses uh, will bring lots of confusion for you in this uh, 18 months time period i am libra ascendant with rahu in 7th house uh, bharani nakshatra and uh, venus in 8th house in taurus uh, kritika nakshatra now rahu will come over my venus okay oh, oh. Uh, rahu will come over my venus i am currently in rahu mahadasha and venus antadasha to rahu is in libra sign uh, in d92 uh, so rahu and venus has lot of connection in my natal chart mm. okay and now rahu transit will be in the 8th house i have read that rahu in 8th house gives a spirit of attacks and fights with in laws uh, while ketu in the second house also detaches from the family what are your views i am already going through problems in marriage and uh, problem with in laws too right so uh, understand that uh, as i say that uh, today is nothing but the result of yesterday you are already going through the issues with in laws so it is not a new result which is uh, which rahu in 8th house can bring that result is already there and uh, believe me in my experience of looking at Uh, charts in last 5 years i haven't seen any good chart for relationships so it is not only for you everyone is uh, having this mess in their life okay so uh, that's what uh, first thing i wanted to do. now uh, rahu is in uh, is transiting your uh, uh, your 8th house okay as i said uh, right now i am going through this transit Uh, in last eight months, uh, sorry, eighteen months, uh, Rahu was uh, in my eighth house. So as I said, uh, it was a time where I felt a lot of instability. Instability may not be there, okay, but I never felt stable in last eighteen months. Okay, I always felt that something uh, can go wrong. It is in my mind that. Uh, Uh, some uh, i am feeling the uh, continuous uh, uh, continuous fear of any instability coming up because rahu was transiting through 8th house uh, for me 
now again for you also rahu is transiting through 8th house it can bring uh, uh, wealth from business uh, if you are into business then it can bring from wealth from inheritance it can bring wealth from your marriage benefits in laws um, ketu transiting through uh, second house can make you either separate or feel separated from your family okay either uh, your uh, family after marriage or before marriage okay it can make you uh, uh, get separated from your family lineage also okay like uh, uh, if you are following me for uh, about one year now like uh, last year september my grandfather passed away so he was the last link between me and the family lineage from where we belong to okay after that there is no link in between okay so once uh, he, he passed away the fam uh, i was totally disconnected from the family lineage okay from where i uh, we belong to okay as a family so that is uh, so ketu in the second house can disconnect you from your family lineage now again it is not necessary that you should be physically separated from someone it can be a mental separation also like you don't want to connect with the, uh, with uh, those people we uh, you don't want to like uh, be in touch with uh, with, uh, with the people of your family lineage okay so this also can be uh, that type of uh, uh, that type of effect with uh, ketu transiting your uh, uh, second house also uh, it is uh, a time where uh, saving your money can be a difficult thing okay so you need to uh, understand uh, money may not be staying in your hand okay so you need to find out right ways or right uh, 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 right avenues to spend your money okay if you invest uh, uh, in some uh, uh, in some uh, schemes or uh, mutual funds and all at least uh, money is not going to uh, stay with you but at least after some time it will give you some return okay like uh, yeah, if i again give you my example uh, ketu was transiting through uh, second house of wealth and it was with saturn also in last year 2000 in 2019 okay so ketu saturn both together in the second house of wealth and i focused uh, my whole attention on paying the ho- uh, paying of the home loan okay so nothing stayed in my hand i could not save any money but i paid off my home loan in that time period okay so you need to find out what is the uh, best way to spend the money money will not stay in your hand but you can you can uh, at least uh, find out that uh, if i spend money on this thing then in future it may be beneficial for me okay so these are the things where you need to be careful taurus lagna uh, rahu transit on sun and mercury in natal chart uh, so does it mean that fifth house will get activated uh, you will get results of fifth house yeah we can say it is activated okay because it is 18 months transit the main thing about these transits of nodes or jupiter or like saturn or even when mars and venus go retrograde that these are long transit 18 months is a huge time okay even if you are not under the mercury dasha right now in 18 months uh, time period you can be under mercury pratyantar dasha at least okay if not uh, mahadasha and antar dasha at least the pratyantar dasha of mercury can come up for 4 5 months and it can give you the result because rahu is transiting through uh, over mercury okay so uh, always be inclusive in astrology 
whenever uh, the question of activation comes uh, especially with these big transits okay so yeah it uh, you can get uh, results of fifth house okay Gemini ascendant Rahu Ketu is moving to 12th 6th axis, right? Mm, Rahu is moving over Jupiter retrograde in 12th house. Uh, uh, will, will this increase the expenditure? Can transiting, uh, can transit Jupiter from the, uh, can protect it will be or will it will be? So first thing is that uh, even transiting Jupiter is not uh, that is strong, right? Uh, it is in the uh, in the sign of uh, Capricorn. It is debilitated. So I personally don't feel that it is going to impact that much. Uh, that uh, 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 going to impact Rahu that much that uh, it will save you from your money. Uh, from your money loss or expenditure but again it is for you to decide what what are the best places to spend your money okay if that decision we can make right uh, where we want to spend our money okay uh, i can understand that if there is urgency if someone is not well in family we have to spend but otherwise uh, otherwise we can make a decision that okay fine uh, 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 this is uh, this is a necessary expenditure this is not so unnecessary expenditure and we can save the money uh, uh, through these schemes and funds and all so that uh, in future they can be uh, helpful for us so rahu in uh, 12th house transit can can certainly increase your expenses but it is for you to decide where to spend that money Ketu is in uh, moving into sixth house, which is uh, stallium, lagna lord, sun, uh, Mercury, sun, Mars, Mercury might be. How do you see this? Uh, Ketu transiting through eighth house uh, person needs to be careful about uh, health issues. They should uh, uh, they should uh, do proper research. Understand it like this that. Uh, uh, Ketu is research and Ketu is also illusion. So whenever Rahu Ketu are in the 6th, 12th axis, either in birth chart or in transit, it can bring uh, uh, illness or health issues where lots of illusion can be involved. You may not have the right idea what type of uh, illness it is. Okay. It may not be diagnosed properly. So it is always better to take uh, second, third opinion and um, as they also represent alternate medication, uh, any alternate medication can, uh, can be more helpful. Again, if there is urgency, then we need to take uh, allopathic medication. But if there is no urgency, then uh, we should uh, take alternate medication in this circumstances where Rahu Ketu are in uh, 6th, 12th axis. how this transition will affect for Sagittarius ascendant where uh, Rahu is transiting in uh, sixth house of uh, Taurus uh, with Gemini moon as Rahu is 12th okay so like right uh, if I take this question as uh, whether to see transit from ascendant or from moon or what what is the difference when it is uh, transit from ascendant and transit from the moon okay age old question right so ascendant is always shows your uh, your event okay what is going to happen okay so rahu transiting through sixth house from ascendant shows that you need to be careful about your health issues or else you may have to spend your money in uh, in your health issues okay uh, that is what you should be uh, taking care uh, plus uh, uh, it is uh, sagittarius ascendant it is third lord uh, so plus it also shows that uh, you can earn wealth from your business if you are in business setup 
now this transit is 12th from the moon okay so 12th from the moon is losses 12th house is losses so mind will always feel there is a sense of loss okay even if uh, uh, even if you are not actually spending the money even if you are not uh, uh, losing your money your mind will always feel that there is something going to happen where you may have to lose your money okay so this is what is the difference between ascendant and moon ascendant always shows the event actual event which happens and moon shows how your mind is going to react over this so uh, uh, rahu transiting 12th from the moon shows that uh, you will have a feeling your mind will uh, uh, will feel that uh, Uh, uh you are going to lose something you are going to lose your money and all but uh, uh, the actual event will be about uh, your health issues uh, related with 6th house when it is transiting over sun mercury mars uh, it is uh, it is uh, transit where you should be careful about your health issues again uh, Uh, if there is a confusion take uh, second opinion and uh, if there is no urgency then take alternate medication good morning i have another question okay okay uh, rahu venus transit from november rahu venus transit okay Uh, apart from this rahu transit um, uh, from uh, november 20th my jupiter return will also start jupiter return means uh, capricorn that means okay you have in your fourth house uh, i am currently in sadhe sati last phase okay and also going through saturn dhaiya sare sati last phase and saturn dhaiya they cannot be together right sare sati last phase and saturn dhaiya cannot be together uh, as i understand it okay uh, let's see you may be calculating dhaiya from the ascendant uh, that's why with rahu mahadasha venus antardasha and rahu will be over uh, venus in 8th house Uh, so many events are uh, together at the sa- uh, same time does it signify some significant changes in life uh, we can say so rahu transiting through 8th house is uh, in itself is enough to uh, to indicate some major changes coming in life okay any major transit through 8th house not only rahu even jupiter transit through 8th house 8th house is the major changes of over li- all life uh that is the thing then um, uh, understand one more thing that uh, during other trans- transits what happen that uh, at least jupiter becomes a saving grace for us okay jupiter uh, is kind of uh, in good dignity or uh, even in neutral dignity uh, it brings some benefits this year jupiter is also going to be debilitated okay so even that help is not there this year so that is making the things more troublesome for us uh, during this year and uh, up to april 2021 at least so jupiter coming uh, again uh, rahu venus dasha is there you can expect some major changes uh, in your life okay either in relationship matters or in uh, professional life but there can be some major changes mostly it can be in your home life because jupiter and saturn both are together uh, together in the fourth house capricorn and uh, rahu's aspect will also be there in capricorn plus uh, during december to february sun mercury venus will also transit there so uh, at a at a time uh, there will be at least uh, four five planets in capricorn sign okay so at that time you can expect some major events happening either at your home with your mother or uh, like uh, any real estate property or something so there can be 
लास्ट फेज ऑफ साढ़े साथी साढ़े साथी इज ऑलवेज द टाइम ऑफ मेजर चेंजेस इन लाइफ सो लास्ट फेज इज लाइक दो चेंजेस आर कमिंग टू कमिंग टू लाइक फॉर्मेशन द द फाइनलिटी फाइनलाइजेशन ऑफ ऑफ दो चेंजेस Leo ascendant. So Rahu is transiting my tenth house. Yes, so when Mars is trans, where Mars is sitting in my natal chart. Ah, uh, it shows that uh, Rahu transiting over Mars. Uh, first of all, it is transiting in your fourth tenth axis. So um, be careful about your parents' health. Okay. uh because ketu is transiting your fourth house scorpio uh, and uh, rahu is over mars okay mars which is your fourth lord also so more towards your mother side okay uh you should be careful about their health plus uh, uh, rahu mars uh, rahu transiting over mars it is like uh, that angarak yoga okay rahu mars conjunction is known as angarak yoga now this angarak yoga is a fiery one okay it can give lots of fire and uh, uh, fire and uh, uh, aggression to the person so that fire and aggression you may be using at your workplace and you may have some disputes conflicts with your uh, uh, authority figures or your colleagues peers at work so be careful about it uh it can also bring some accidents for you and for your uh, for your parents also be careful about it so th- uh, these things you should be careful will this be good for energy going towards profession uh if you can uh, like uh, uh control that aggression and fire uh then it can be uh, bringing uh, bringing wealth due to your career because rahu is, is, is still in taurus sign of wealth and 10th house of career that and uh, that thing is uh, important here the aggression factor okay or if you are in your own business that is totally different thing uh before ketu enter into a scorpio it crosses kandanta in mula nakshatra how it affects it is right now transiting through that uh, so as i understand kandanta uh, this is my own logic kandanta in fire signs are not that important or uh, it is not uh, that much of impactful which uh, where uh, which uh, the uh, which type of impact uh, gandanta in water signs can do okay gandanta degrees means uh, last 3 degrees of water sign first 3 degrees of fire sign so ketu transiting through this uh, f- uh, uh, this first degrees of uh, sagittarius may not be that impactful but when it enters into scorpio which is a water sign then it may be uh, uh, then it may be more impactful because water signs represents our emotion ketu is the energy of letting go at that time we may feel that uh, we are losing everything okay we have to let go of uh, um, at least uh, things related to the house where uh, scorpio is falling okay so those uh, those things we may feel that we are we are letting go of the things or we have to let go of the things at that time the feeling of drowning can come up which is related with gandanta okay so and, no, and it it is not that impactful now in ketu in sagittarius in the first 3 degrees but it will be more impactful when it is in scorpio in the last 3 degrees okay uh, i have gone through your articles very informative good day have a nice day too thank you thank you uh, for the analysis rahu transit over ketu in taurus uh, how relations will be relationships are always messed up there is nothing to be there said
okay uh, it will be challenging now all, all i can say okay uh, as relationships are always challenging rahu and ketu transiting over uh, over each other can make them more challenging more confusing uh, additionally it can bring factor of uh, factor of this uh, uh, cheating and fraud also in relationship so be careful i will have ketu in my scorpio moon sign um, what can i expect i will have ketu in scorpio or moon sign it is good for uh, any research oriented activity if you are into occult mysticism or any kind of research oriented activity it is a very good sign uh, for uh, ketu's transit uh, at the same time if you meditate uh, i think you should meditate with K- uh, moon in scorpio and ketu transiting over it you must meditate to sail through this transit otherwise it can give you lots of feeling of uh, uh, lots of feelings of uh, uh, detachment and uh, uh, like uh, unknown fears and all and those things can come up so just to avoid uh, those circumstances you must meditate and meditate regularly if possible whole of the 18 months time period uh mind will feel lots of uh, uh lots of this kind of uh, what to say uh, instability factor lots of changes and all okay so just be careful uh meditate regularly okay i think we are done Okay, chalo. We will see you next week. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Take care. Who is this? Yes, you're welcome. Take care.